Hello everyone, my name is Guo Hao Huang. Today, I'm going to guide you through our second unit where we'll be learning how to choose a research topic. This is today's outline. Consider your own interests. Consider your own expertise. Consider five aspects of smart education research. Research topics must be innovative. Eight, questions must have answers. When deciding on a research topic, we can think from the perspective of interest. Why? Because people who can combine research with their interests are the happiest. It is easier to go all out because they are combined with their interests. Let me take a personal example. I love Chinese music, especially Erhu, so I combine my interests with my research. Therefore, I have proposed several projects to National Science and Technology Councils based on Erhu teaching related issues, including using individualized peer evaluation to improve the effectiveness of flipped teaching of musical instrument performance and taking amateur Erhu learners as an example. Another example is the application of wearable and somatosensory technology to develop an Erhu playing posture correction system and its effectiveness evaluation. If we can combine our interests with your research, you will be more energetic and happier. The second thing you can consider is expertise. It is easier to succeed if you combine your expertise with research because you can get twice the result with half the effort and reduce setbacks. I have a PhD in electronics from National Chiaotong University and worked as a researcher at Chonghua Telecom Laboratories. I have been an engineer for five years, so my specialty is system development, especially integrated systems. Therefore, most of my research is about system development. These are my National Science and Technology Council projects with more than 10 projects. The projects are all combined with system development. For example, the impact of subject themes and prior knowledge on competitive game-based learning is a system. We will develop a system and then discuss some corresponding learning impacts. For example, the design, development and effectiveness analysis of a cooperative license, question bank practice system based on dynamic grouping strategy. So we developed a system that will automatically group it and be dynamic. That is, people who come to class that day will automatically group it. Moreover, the grouping process can help students do cooperative learning. There are many system developments like this. System development is not only my interest. It can also cultivate students' programming and system development abilities. After they graduate, finding a job will also be more accessible so this combination is quite good. However, combining our interests with our expertise does not mean it is a good research topic because we have to consider five aspects when doing research in our smart education or digital learning fields. The first one is, what educational theory does it comply with? The second question is whether the technology is innovative enough. The third question is, is the learning subject extraordinary? Next, are the research subjects relatively rare to see? Finally, is the research topic to be discussed relatively new? In these five aspects of our work, we must find at least one or two innovative points instead of all being old. We can use new educational theories and technologies, apply them to new subjects, use less studied objects, or explore new research topics. If our topic is new enough, we can read some literature and get some inspiration from the literature. Moreover, the literature usually mentions that we can still do it in the future. What are the studies? The first innovative approach is to employ less commonly used educational theories, such as multimedia design theories, scaffolding instruction, mastery learning, 
forgetting curve theory, constructionism theory, Bloom's taxonomy, etc. The second innovation method is to use new technologies such as augmented reality, virtual reality, motion capture, wearable technology, robots, and generative artificial intelligence. However, you have to think about why these innovative technologies are suitable. The third innovation method is applied to new subjects. The subjects studied by most scholars are Chinese, English, mathematics, nature, science, information, etc. It is not easy to make it better, so we can also think about some research that is more special and less popular, such as art, physical education, care, or food. Compared with Chinese, English, mathematics, science, or information, there should be few people research. Next, we can use objects that are relatively rarely studied. The most research objects in the world are college students. Why? Because most researchers are university professors. Using their students as research objects is natural. Therefore, college students are the most common research objects. The second most common object is primary school students, because primary school students do not feel pressured and are more cooperative with teachers. The third common objects are middle school students. The rest are relatively few people, such as children, the elder, disabled people, criminal, or aborigines. Lastly, we can explore some new research topics. Learning effectiveness is a must. In addition to learning effectiveness, we can explore gender and prerequisite knowledge issues. Will gender affect learning? The answer is yes. Therefore, prerequisite knowledge, cognitive style, learning style, and thinking style will also have an impact. What impact will it have? It can affect motivation, attitude, effectiveness, behavior, or cognitive loading. These are the ones we commonly see. In addition, are there any others, such as class participation, flow experience, etc.? These are all things we can explore. When conceiving a research topic, you can consider its feasibility by answering several questions. If these eight questions can be answered, this research can be done. Usually, the reason why you can't answer these eight questions is because you haven't read enough literature. The first question is, what kind of subject is it? You must know clearly what the subject of your research is. For example, whether it is natural science, English, or something else. You always must have a subject. The second question is, what are the teaching goals of this subject? The third question is, what are the difficulties or problems in traditional teaching about this subject? For example, if students cannot learn well using this traditional teaching method, what is their problem? Why? It may be due to the lack of opportunities for this practice, the lack of practice situations, etc. There should be some research on these issues in the past, so you have to check the relevant literature to find out how people have researched these issues, such as through mobile learning, virtual reality, or game-based learning. Next, you must explore whether people have done it in the past and their shortcomings. This is very important because if people in the past did it well, there is no need to do more research. Wherever people have done, there are still deficiencies. This is the point. This is called the research gap. To address these deficiencies, our research proposes what kind of intervention or model can solve this problem, which is crucial. The next question is, what is the educational theory behind the teaching model or intervention proposed in this study? This is very important. This will prevent the proposed method from being questioned or refuted by others, so you must have an educational theory to support yourself. 
The next one concerns the subject's teaching objectives and the researcher's intervention strategies. What should be measured in this study? The last one is, can I find two classes with which to experiment? Each group of students should discuss and decide on a reasonable research topic according to today's teaching method. Each group writes five keywords for your research topic. Keywords should appear in the title. Keywords should be arranged in the order they appeared. Finally, each group should send a representative to the stage to report the topic title and keywords. This is the introduction to the second unit. If you have any questions, please ask and discuss them with me. Goodbye.